Welcome back to ESA Summer 21. We are raising money for Save the Children. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Twitch and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now it's time for Mitch Flower Power running Super Mario Bros. 3. Take it away. <laughs> What's going on, guys? I am Mitch Flower Power, and I have my co-commentary here, Teex88. Teex? Hey, welcome, everybody. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, Mitch Flower Power is, of course, a runner who needs no introduction. Uh, he has, of course, been uh, active in the SMB3 scene for about 10 years, uh, which would go as far back as the Speed Demo Archives day, if I'm <laughs> not mistaken. Yeah, and, yeah, but, yeah, really far back. Yeah, not only was he the first to break the 110 barrier in the 100% category last February with the 109.58, but he just shattered it three more times in the past week with a 109.56, <laughs> 52, and finally a 38. A which is I don't know the, what happened last week. I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know that either. <laughs> but yeah, your consistency has just been off the charts lately. But yeah, that's uh, 109.38 is where the record currently stands. And it's where I imagine the, it's going to remain for a very long time. But uh, even beyond the world record grinds themselves, uh, Mitch has been quite active in the investigative side of speedrunning as well, whether it's trying to work out new optimizations with the warpless categories route or, you know, just tweaking conventional strats to save a few frames here or there, you know, manipulating subpixels for clips. And he regularly pub publishes his findings in uh, tutorials and guides, which can be found online. So he's one of many individuals in the Mario 3 community, uh, whom we owe a debt of gratitude for his contributions and diligence. But uh, yeah, awesome. so for those you who ready, are- um, You ready to get this baby started? I am. I am definitely ready. ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and give a, a little countdown here. Three, two, one, and on go is when the timer starts. All right, so here we go. Three, two, one, go. All right. All right. So this is Mario Brothers 3, 100%, and Teeks has a couple things to let you guys know. So yeah, 1-1 one, one would uh, ordinarily be one of the, unironically, one of the scariest levels in the game, uh, especially in the context of a marathon war race, just because of how easy it is to die to the first plant. Um, but we're going to do a bit of a pipe rub strat before we boost into the clouds with small Mario and then avoid obstacles that are on the ground. So no problem here. Shoutouts to turnbacks. <laughs> Right on. One last turn back to the end. Normally, I don't want to grab the mushroom, but I again, I can also die from the the turtle there. So uh, safety marathon strats, you know. Yeah, one two is a uh, has a pretty finicky strat right in the beginning to get early P speed. It requires running up the base of those two hills in the beginning, just ever so slightly, in order to start building your meter. And your success in building those arrows is highly contingent on uh, what starting sub pixel you have. Uh, something you don't really have much control over. So it would save you about a second. So it's a nice bonus if you get it, but if not, not a huge deal. Shoutouts to more turnbacks with stars. <laughs> so, yeah, was, so yeah, there's actually two ways you can build early P speed in 1-3. Um, Mitch took the, the safer route, which is, you know, perfectly reasonable to stomp the Koopa shell and then just get that boomerang bro out of your way. Yeah, it's like a frame jump. If you jump too high, you'll land on the, the block above and you won't even get P speed. So it's like, do I waste, what? 0.25 stomp in the shell, or do I not have P speed the whole level? It's pretty rough. You know, you, you definitely want to make sure you have P speed. Exactly. So yeah, one four. We're gonna have our uh, first of many auto scrollers in the game. Uh, it's not gonna be too much in the level going on, aside from a bit of platform hopping and getting the raccoon leaf, uh, which Mitch is going to be picking up along the way. Uh, that is, of course, going to come in handy for when he does the the fort next. Uh, it's also worth noting that auto scrollers are usually good checkpoints in the game to keep an eye out for your score and coin count, since there's always that potential risk you can get a coin chip. Yeah, um, and that's that's pretty much what I like to do in this level. It's like a a preempt. Ooh, I went right inside the block there. That was sweet. Um, but yeah, I use this level as like a preemptive not get a coin chip in world three. So you can't get a coin chip in world two, but you can get a coin chip in worlds one, three, five, and six. Um, so I have to be careful to not have 77 coins or 66 coins by the time I get to World 3, and depending on how many coins I get here really helps me out with that. So. Yeah, you especially don't want to deal with those because the, the coin chips sc scroll about as slow as the World 4 airship, so that can cost you about a minute and rob you of whatever power-up you had at the time. Right. So yeah, we're in uh, one fort now. Um, we're not going to be staying here too long. Just going to rack up a bit of P-Speed and then use that to fly up and grab the Warp Whistle. And while it's not going to be used in any part of the run, uh, this routing will save time over fighting Boom Boom. Yeah, you don't want to fight the Bam Bams. Bam Bams <laughs> are two Bam Bams. <laughs> bam Bams. 
All right, 1-5. So as we enter this level, we're going to see Midge do a bit of a, uh, a damage boost out of his tail when he's going down the hill. It's actually faster to run through most levels in the game without a tail, uh, since you have more control of your P-Speed that way. There's only a handful of instances in the run where it's more advantageous to make use of flight mechanics, which we're going to see later on. I actually almost have a coin ship, Chet. <laughs> I almost <laughs> have a Like, how? What, what, oh like, my god. Right? Yeah. After all that talk. 4340. So yeah, we're going to be uh, starting off 1-6 with a full jump to the from the far right of the first platform, allowing you to stump that first Koopa without slowing down. So, um, yeah, Mitch has um, a very reliable visual cue so that he can just start building P-Speed over those two beams and then just stump off that Koopa. So, no problem here. So I think, hold on, hold on, let's see. Oh, I almost just got all movements of one in World 1. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Unless I'm missing something, but I think I think that was pretty close. No, never mind. I take it back. Yeah, speaking of uh, RNG in this game, um, it doesn't matter what category you run. You're always going to be at the mercy of it to some degree. And Mitch, yeah. there's one thing. Mitch, there's one thing you noted in your uh, your pre-race interview for AGDQ 2020 last year, and that really stuck out. And it's that no matter how much R like considering how much RNG there is in SMB3, this game just never lets you reach your full potential, no matter how good your execution is. Right. That's so, why. That's why the 10938 is like it's like finally that one run that's like as close as you as you want to be. Oh. Yeah, while hand RNG doesn't really affect you to the same degree as you, if you were playing Warpless, um, Hammer Bro movements definitely do at a higher level in 100%. So you could be at the top of your game and still lose about 2 to 8 seconds per world if you get that Hammer Bro movement. So this world 1 uh, was relatively pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. Any time loss that I experienced here was just doing some marathon safe strats. But um, we have time for uh, one donation if you guys, you guys have it. Sure I do. Uh, we have Twitchin sending $75 our way, saying, This is only my second ESA, but I'm glad to be here and to donate to such a good cause. Stay hydrated, good luck, and thanks to everyone involved. And greetings from Germany. Thank you so much for your donation, and back to you, Mitch. Yeah, thank you very much. I took a drink, stay hydrated, that's right. Hope everyone is having a, a good time. This is, I got the 100%, looking good. And we are now entering World 2, which is Sand World. Um, most people remember this world by the dancing trees. I mean, how could you not love the dancing trees, right, Teeks? Oh, yeah, of course. That's one of the first things I remember when I got this game when I was three. <laughs> when you, oh, when you were three. You were, uh, yeah, I was really young. I, I used to watch my older brother play this back in the day. So yeah, two one is going to be a pretty straightforward in execution. It just simply entails just um, you know just running and just uh, rubbing that first block in order to build your P speed, and then just make your way over those pile of drivers to get to the end. Big bounce, big bounce for Big Mario. Ooh, Amber brother, not being nice. So yeah, two two is going to be one of the more somewhat scarier levels in the game, just because of how um, just a lot of things can go wrong if you slide down that hill the wrong way, whether you go right into the pit or just fall right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, if you if you miss your input on that brown block, like you'll just it's an instant death. You can't save it, so it's very scary. And you're like you're going you're not going P speed speed, but you're going faster than base speed, so it's um it can really freak you out with it. But luckily we made it through. No no mode of tears. All right, so two fort. Uh, the trickiest part of this fort is just going to be right in the beginning because the the setup to build early P speed requires some really small meticulous jumps to avoid those dry bones while still allowing yourself enough running space to build meter. Um, but if you're able to get that early P speed, it does save you about a second and a half. Yeah, and um, you want you also want to make sure to not lose your fire flower when you're in, in one of the top level runners here with this game because uh, every time you don't kill a boom boom with fire flower, you lose about three seconds. High two, low three seconds. I guess it depends on how fast you kill him. So it's like very important uh, to not lose fire flower before boom booms and stuff. Yeah, for the world, uh, for the most part, world two is going to be pretty inconsequential as far as whether you have fire or not. But you at least want to have it for boom boom. So uh, two three, we're going to be making some pretty regular use of uh, medium jumps, and we're going to probably see a new strat that was just implemented recently. So we saw um, Mitch just stomp that green Koopa and then carried that green shell to the end. Um, this is dubbed the green rocket because um, when you carry that shell with P-Speed and throw it that way, it breaks the blocks a lot quicker than if you were just to kill it the more conventional, to kick it the more conventional way. Yeah, it does so it. the shell obtains like the speed of P-Speed. It's weird. It like transfers through um, Mario <laughs> into the shell and you get to keep the P-Speed. 
Yeah, it's actually interesting to note that uh, there was an older iteration of that that uses the red Koopa shell that was in the beginning, but it generates about 40 frames due to lag, whereas with the green <laughs> rocket, you only lose about 10. So you're saving at least a half second just because of that. Yeah, sometimes you can actually get the same amount of lag frames with the green rocket as you do if you didn't use any rocket. So it's just that one spot right there, right, with all the pile drive. It just creates so much lag. And there's the Mr. Sun. Hi, Sun. Bye, Sun. <laughs> get pretty, some pretty decent Hammer Brother movements. Um, they might jerk me around here. Hopefully not. Um, we'll see, though. See, so yeah, as, as we saw from um, right as Mitch finished the the Angry Sun level, he went straight to 2-5, and I imagine he's going to go straight to 2-4 next before fighting the Fire Bros, and hopefully, hopefully he gets good Hammer Bro RNG so we can just break the rock and go straight to the Fire Bros. Yeah, I want left and up here, and we got both down, so I'm actually not even going to uh, chance it. I could actually still get screwed over here, so hopefully not. Yeah, in an ideal world, uh, Mitch would would pr probably prefer to do 2-4 first and then do the Fire Bros next just because it would save you a couple map movements and a little bit of time as a result. But yeah. uh, but if the um, but yeah, ultimately, you're, the way you navigate through here is going to be contingent on where the Hammer Bros go. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess the easiest way to look at it is like, I'm doing the Pyramid now, right? And then the End Castle's right beside me. That's when I would want to go. But now I'm passing the castle and then I got to come back. So if they switch here, that'll be really nice. And they did. Thank you. Very, very nice. Okay, so this kind of made it pretty okay. I hope he doesn't run into me, because I actually didn't equip my star. Um, so hopefully he moves up and gives me time to equip my star. If not, I'll use it on the Fire Bros, and nice. Oh, okay. Nice. So yeah, so yeah, Mitch wants to use a star here, because that will allow him to, to kill the boomerang, so he doesn't have to wait for it to leave the screen before the, the chest reveals itself. Yeah, Nintendo was too smart when they made this game. Oh, and there it is. Uh, so that is the worst position the Hammer Brother can be in because of all the extra map movements. If the Hammer Brother was up by the Mushroom House, it would be fast to get him, but no, I get the good old bottom bro. <laughs> That's okay, though. Not the end of the world. All right, so for 2-4, this is going to be one of the few levels in the game that makes you a little bit nervous because it starts off with a really tightly timed jump to start building P-Speed, and then you just want to jump and boost off that first set of Koopas past the Boomerang Bros. Uh, and it's very easy to die, just be, uh, depending on where that Hammer Bro happen the, um, that Boomerang Bro just happens to be. I forgot to buffer, but hopefully it's okay. Yeah, I think you should still be set up for a pretty good pattern. I waited, so hopefully... Dang it! This is uh, this is an offer. This is probably where. Um, but we have time for about two donations, two or three, if you guys have them. Sure, we do. We have an insane two hundred fifty-six dollars <laughs> from Behold My Cape, saying another two hundred fifty-six dollars for one of my favorite runners and favorite games. What a great week for Mitch and for a great cause in Save the Children. Thank you so much for this wonderful donation. Uh, we also have a second one with $50 from Chart Grimm saying, Go Mitch! This is one of my favorite games of all time, and Mitch holds the rank of Master. Thank you so <laughs> much for both of, the, of these donations. And um, we are at $4,556 raised for Save the Children already. Thank you so Ooh. much for that. All the cars in the background are super excited for those donations. <laughs> I, I am too. <laughs> Likewise. Um, so I'm gonna play this pretty safe here. Let's see what I get. Yeah. I don't know, that didn't look safe. You looked like you attacked it pretty aggressively. Ooh, did we get the off-screen? <laughs> oh, no <yes>. way! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, we just saw Mitch do an off-screen wand grab, so we did a wall jump onto the top, and then he just grabbed the wand from up top of the screen, so he, when he does that when he does that falling cutscene, it does a little screen grab, because the, uh, the game also thinks that he's on the bottom half, so uh, he gets to the throne room a little bit quicker, and that will ultimately save him about four seconds. Oh my goodness. Alright. I like this run. <laughs> I would too. Oh, I got a reset. I didn't get, <laughs> I didn't get like uh -huh. two frame saved. So yeah, that is um, a frame perfect jump that you could do right in the beginning, so that you can get a little bit of an extra boost before you hit the water in three one. Uh, it saves you a couple frames. But yeah, when Mitch was talking about buffering before entering the castle, he was um, he was talking about trying to uh, prepare himself for a specific pattern he gets from the Koopaling fire kills. 
So the way it works is each pattern is determined by a timer which starts from the last level you completed to the frame upon which you enter the, the airship. Um, and those patterns operate on a rotation which shifts every couple of frames. So you'll get a different pattern depending on whether you come from 2-4 or 2-5 or if you're coming from the pyramid. So that's all I meant. So um, yeah, the Firefly was pretty much going to be your best friend since um, yeah, you, you want to be able to take out as many bosses as you can and save yourself a couple seconds here or there. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So pretty decent Hammer Brother movement so far. This is ideally the, the kind of movements you want. You don't want Runaway. It doesn't affect you too much in this category, but it can still creep up on you and uh, cost you some time. So it's like... Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you uh, can get through... You can get through World 3 um, pretty much oh. um, on par with a uh, really solid execution and still lose about 7 seconds if you get a runaway bro past like 3-8 or something. I mean, it just <laughs> never comes back. Good. Yeah, runaway is a jerk. That's a, that's a good movement. Hopefully he goes back down again after this. Everyone in chat can spam down right now. That would really help me a lot if the uh, Hammer Brothers decide to listen to you guys. Everyone just spams down for me. Get yourself involved in Mario 3 speedrunning. So yeah, if you weren't resetting over the uh, first frame jump in 3-1, you, you have to do it through door 3 now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nice, thank you, chat. Top pattern not ideal. So I kind of want the Hammer Brother to give me the water battle here. It's like, if I get water battle with low pattern, then it's not so bad. Yeah, this is great. Because now I kill them and I don't do extra map movements. Unfortunately, I got top pattern though, so not a big deal. The end of the world. Yeah, generally you want to avoid um, water battles just because um, once you take out the Hammer Bros, they kind of drift in the water a little bit before the um, before the treasure chest spawns, but not yeah. a big deal. So 3-5 is going to be one of the, the easier levels in the game if you have a P-Wing. It's just a matter of just flying over the water and timing your jumps so that you land flush with every platform, ensuring that you have plenty of surface space to run off of, and then make the most use of your running speed. That's right, Jane. Duck. And cover. Okay, so World 3 is going pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm able to, to use the most ideal uh, map movements, which is really good. That's kind of like a big thing in 100%. Um, whereas in World 2, I didn't really get that um, all that much. I had to kind of do the wraparound. Um, yeah, so it, a lot of people ask, like, is there is there a lot of RNG in 100%? Like, it couldn't possibly compare to Warpless, right? I mean, one extra Hammer Brother and Warpless, you got to reset. But um, yeah. 100% has a lot of different RNG, I'd say. It's, it's like, in Warpless, you're always going one direction, and no matter what's in your path, you keep going. But in 100%, sometimes it forces you to go different ways. You do extra map movements, that costs time. Extra movements to the bro, that costs time. So yeah, a lot, a lot of different stuff. Um, we do have time for a donation if you guys have one. Let's go. Sure, we do. We have $20 from Gunback saying, keep on keeping on. Thank you very much for your donation. So yeah, three six is one of the more fun auto scrollers to mess around with. It's uh, it's a nice cool up period to grab that fire flower and uh, start taking some shots at the Koopas along the way. And it's also one of the more noteworthy levels in the game to highlight some graphical glitches where you can just turn item boxes blue and donut lips green. You know the moldy donuts. The moldy donuts. Got to watch out for those. <laughs> And perhaps the riskiest strat uh, you can go for in this level is building P-Speed on the last platform so you can stomp the Koopa and then get into the pipe a little earlier than if you approached it from over the spinner. Yeah, we're in a marathon, so we're going to do spinner strats over there. This loses probably half a second, I'd say. Whoa. Oh yeah, that's something you don't want to see. <sighs> that was scary. <laughs> okay, I think I was supposed to die there. All right. Focus. <laughs> that was crazy. That that got the heart racing there. Count your blessings and carry on. Yep. So yeah, we're just gonna um, boost into the clouds. There's, oh, there's ordinarily uh, a, like um, I think there's a coin happen there where you can pick up a cloud, but obviously it's gonna be faster just to drop down and get to the card. Yeah. Shout out to Super Swim, right? That's right. See, so, yeah, so, yeah, just. All you have to do is move a couple of pixels to the right and then just do a very small jump into the water. So you'll be able to just duck slide off the corner and then just get a pretty optimal, um, you know, access into the pipe. And then the rest of it is going to be pretty straightforward, pretty pedestrian in nature. Just going to let Mitch do his thing. Just keep on swimming. 
keep on swimming. Yeah, so like, I mean, that's that's kind of the way Super Swim works, right? If half of a tile is submerged in water, um, so like Mario's knees when he's standing up as big Mario is in water. If I duck, then all of Mario's body is in water, which means he can swim now. Whereas if he was standing, he couldn't swim. So you use that to our advantage to like press duck at the edge of a ledge. And then I stay underwater and allows me to swim right to the pipe instead of jumping and then kind of like sinking to the pipe. So yeah, 3-8 is one of those levels you don't really see P-Speed Incorporated as a strat. The objective here is just to clear those two ice blocks so that you can just start jumping immediately every time you come in contact with the water. And if you're maintaining a consistent rhythm, then Boss Bass will get close to you at the very most, but not really have an opportunity to eat you. It's so weird that they are ice blocks, because like we're in a pretty tropical place and we gotta grab an ice blocks. I mean, there's more ice blocks in the next level, too. Alright, so... Sh Shoutouts to H. Yo, lowercase h, let's go! And he gets it, very nice. Lowercase h. So yeah, you always want to get that H jump because it will save you about five to seven seconds, uh, depending on, um, you know, if you get an extra amount of leg due to having to clear those blocks to, to get a path to the pipe. So thankfully we're able to bypass all of that. And uh, if you guys have donations, we got time. Another auto scroller. All right, we have $77 from Freezen85 saying, off-screen one grab in a marathon? That's just stupid, Mitch. Thank I you know. very much for your donation. Um, we also have $50 from Forest Kitty saying, Thank you, ESA, for putting this on. Glad to support a great cause. Go, Mitch. Go, Thank Mitch. you very much. Yeah, that's from Kaylee. Thank you, Kaylee. Combo. Yeah, Wendy, interestingly enough, is one of the easier Koopalings to fire kill, but the hardest to stomp kill normally. And it's easy because you're on flat ground, which makes it pretty easy to measure your distance and shoot fireballs in pairs until she's down. Um, but yeah, she's also annoying. Uh, she's also um, she's also one of those Koopalings you don't really have to worry about their pattern too much because she could be fought the exact same way each time. Yeah. Um, once upon a time, the speedrun didn't include Fireflower here, so yeah, that was scary. Long, long time ago. But yeah, um, on the flip side, um, if, you have, if you're in a position where you have to stomp kill her, um, it's the fact that she fires off those rings with the wand, uh, and they just bounce around the room and they never disappear until she's defeated. And it's tricky enough to maneuver around them once they're there, but once she starts jumping, it's very easy to get caught off guard. So we see a 2.22 on the in-game timer, so that was a pretty optimal fire kill. There, there is like a, a, a slightly faster one, but um, the hitboxes are really jank with the, with the bosses when you stomp them. Sometimes the hitboxes are favorable on the left side of the body, sometimes on the right side of the body, and it's just like, it's such an annoying thing. Yeah. Right on. So that's World 3, we're moving on to World 4. I think most people's favorite world is World 4 here. <laughs> Lots of people like the World 4. Yeah, it's really enjoyable aesthetically, but it's... Probably not one of my favorites to, as far as the speed run goes, just because there's a lot of technical stuff that can go really ugly if you mess something up. So, 4 1 right off the bat has a pretty fun P speed strat. Uh, you either want to grab that Koopa shell or at least clear a path for yourself with the fireball so you can land flush with every surface you run on and then that just bo boost through the waterfall. I finally joined the club, everyone. I finally joined the club. It only took me like three mm -hmm. years, but I, I don't grab that shell anymore. I was even already considering it. I was scared. <laughs> All right, so we saw that um, we saw Mitch did a simultaneous stomp and fire kill on that big Koopa just now, and that was done intentionally to despawn one of the the big plants coming up. So that allows him to carry that ice block over to the second piranha, so he doesn't have to slow down for any reason. All right, four three is definitely one of the most enjoyable levels in World Four. Um, yeah, it's especially it's um, aesthetically appealing just because of how well it flows between the duck jumps and the way you stomp on the enemies as you're making your way through the underground, as we'll see momentarily. Yeah, it's a really nice level. Pretty stressful jumps, though, near the end. One, one false move. Yeah, you have that one single tile platform that you boost off of, so... Yeah, yeah if you miss that, you're in trouble. 
yeah, really satisfying. So we see uh, Mitch is going to take a riskier approach with uh, 4F1. He's not going to equip a star, so he has a really tight space he has to move in when he ducks through that wall. And doesn't take damage off the hot foot, he makes his way past the thwomp. Very nice. <sighs> Alright, so I use the music box here to lock the Hammer Brother in place. So he doesn't uh, run around and create movements of four and switch with the other bros or maybe marathon. It's a nice strat and it worked out because I got a movement of one and this Hammer Brother moved back down with another movement of one. That's exactly what we want. So thank you very much, Hammer Brothers. So yeah, interesting thing to note about the, um, the lack of twos in 4-4. Um, the way it moves around and the spiny throws are not RNG. They're entirely dependent on where you are in the water and what kind of inputs you are, uh, you're making in order to get yourself through the level. So as long as you're playing 100% uh, consistently each time, you can pretty much avoid getting sniped each time. Uh, realistically, yeah. though, much easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also very common mistakes, though. So there's like three different ways that you can learn the level as well, just based on mistakes that you make pretty frequently, which is the same for most runners. Like either you don't get P-Speed at the top, or you miss a jump. Yeah, it's just... Ooh, not all right. So not quite good RNG here, but we'll we'll try and make it work. So yeah, four six is a pretty fun level. Uh, not only do you have a chance to just uh, boost in the sky off the hitboxes of those large Coopers, uh, but you can snipe the, uh, some of them out along the way, along with some of the the piranha plants. Uh, yeah, very nice level. Nice. That's well. Big twisties. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Four or five. See, so, yeah, what we saw just now was one of the one of the trickiest uh, P-speed builds that you can possibly go for in the game. So we saw he did that big jump, so we can land flush on that pipe, and he did those micro turnbacks in order to manipulate his P meter. So that was able to save him. I think maybe about a second or two. Yeah, my full boat, my full big jump was off a little bit, but not too bad. So yeah, four F two is uh, definitely far easier than the other four um, that we just saw, at least in terms of execution. And what's great is that if you have a fire flower, um, you can pick up early just in case you need it as a backup. Uh, but beyond that, you can just build some early P speed, and then uh, you can do a bit of a climb to get to, to to the boom boom. That's very similar to what you would see in two uh, J the lost levels. Yeah. All right. Um, we have about two minutes of auto scroller here, so I mean, if you guys want to go nuts with the donations and whatnot, go right ahead. Of course we do. We have twenty dollars from the Huxer saying, "Greetings from the Fort World for Airship." I might have planned to read it on the airship, and now. <laughs> Ah, uh, never mind then, but we do have $20 from the Huckster <laughs> saying greetings from the Fort Ward for Airship. <laughs> and that $20 is going to the incentive of um, Scooby-Doo cosplay during uh, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights. Yes. Um, that is going to be later in the marathon, but you can already uh, use your donations to support that incentive. We are at $25 of $1,000. All of your donations can always support incentives and bid wars. Make sure to check them out because if you're already si uh, sending a donation, you could also support a bid war or two and maybe you'll find them interesting. We also have $10 from UFL without any comment. Thank you very much. And with that, we are at $4,942, so we're, we're missing just 58 bucks to reach, to reach 5k, and the marathon hasn't been online. Well, w without the pre-show, the marathon hasn't been online for a day even, so that's a really good score, and let's get to that 5k as soon as we can. Thank you so much for all of your donations, all of them are going fully to save the children. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys, it's great. You guys, are doing, you guys are killing it! You guys are killing it! 
So yeah, um, in 100%, there's only one p pattern you have to really worry about with Iggy since you're going to consistently be going to the airship uh, directly from the fort and with no extra hammer throw movements. So you can expect Iggy just to shoot his wand right away and then just start moving forward. So that'll give Mitch enough time to get four opening shots before he stomps and finishes them off. Try for that uh, off-screen wand grab right there again. Worth so you can only off-screen wand grab in specific fortresses. You technically can in all of them, um, but you don't want to do it in World One or World Three because the ground is flat. Even if I did P speed and got a wall jump, I wouldn't even be able to make it up there in time. But I, I don't even think I'd get enough height. So you need to do it on an airship where there's like stairs and platforms to give you that extra height. So yeah. Yep. 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 All right. So we're gonna be making our way over to World Five now. Um, this is going to be having, uh, this is probably one of the second hardest P-Speed builds in the game, but, um, yeah, we see some micro turnbacks here, and it looks like he's just barely missed by a frame. Right, I, I, I must have jumped just a little too early there. I had it, but I must have jumped, yeah. All right, so we have 5-2 next. Um, this one's pretty uh, simple in terms of execution, but has some serious time repercussions if, worst case scenario, uh, you take that fall of shame right in the beginning. Uh, but you can maintain some pretty consistent rhythm in order to bounce onto that note block and then make your way over to the overhead pipe. So just uh, have a couple slides, take out those Goombas, and we're out of here. Yeah, get rid of the Goombers! They're gone! <laughs> right on. Deeks, you're killing it, man. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And thanks everyone uh, for watching as well. This is a lot of fun. Thank yeah, you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right, so there we have no hammer bros that are immediately in our way, so we're just going to go straight to the fortress. So, um, yeah, this is going to be another one that's pretty easy in terms of execution. You just want to make your way over to the lower levels uh, to get across the lava, and then once you build that P-Speed, uh, it's very easy to navigate past those swamps in the road of this. Uh, they're not going to be in your way. Those backups, man, I tell you. I did something that's a little bit more safe, but yeah, I, I, yeah, I made it. <laughs> I made it. Woo! All right, keep it going. Don't not stop. Going oh, right. left in Mario Bros. Teaks? What? <laughs> right. All right, so 5-3 is um, a pretty definitive gatekeeper of World 5, and it's one of the longer levels in the, the game to endure maintaining P-Speed without taking damage. Uh, it's uniquely awkward in the sense that you're moving from right to left for that first half, and you want to have that meter build as soon as you snipe out those spinies as we saw Mitch do. So yeah, it's a little awkward trying to navigate past those single tile platforms, but uh, yeah, took out that piranha, we made our way to the end. Yeah, it's actually really nice to do most of your jumps on the brown blocks instead of the blue blocks. Uh, helps out a little bit, I find. You have more room to get that jump, you know? One, two. So I'm trying to make sure I don't have more than five or zero in my tens digit of my score. I want to make sure that I'm not getting uh, screwed over or anything here. Coin ships. Exactly. So yeah, we saw Mitch... Um, a Equip a star before entering the, the Twisty Castle, so that allows him to get through the um, through those rotted discs a little quicker. So interestingly enough, the Twisty Castle is technically not an action level, it's just a, a pretty elaborate pipe transition to get to the Sky World. That's correct, Teeks. If you could actually figure out a way to skip this whole thing, that would still be valid in 100%, because this is not a level. That's right. Pretty oof spot with the hammer brother, but not bad. I have a music box. Yeah, five four is not terribly complicated, but uh, it is a little scary at the same time if you happen to jump the wrong way and just get uh, a little caught up in those spinners. But thankfully, that's not going to be the case here. Yeah. No. 
Meanwhile, that hammer bro on the far left is not in a really convenient spot. Um, ideally, you would want to fight it right after the level from the, the far right side so you don't have to deal with any more hammer bro movements. Yeah, Ooh. right? Like, I, I might... If he moves right, instead of doing... Well, it depends. If he moves up, I'm safe, but if he moves right, I might cloud and fight him. I think I'll cloud and fight him. We'll see. I'm just gonna cloud, get him out of the way. That's not so bad. Lose a little bit of time menuing, but he's gone now. Exactly. I don't have to worry about it. Very nice. Alright, so we're gonna be entering 5-7 next. It has a pretty meticulous P-Speed strat that comes up. You just wanna take out that Koopa, uh, that Koopa right away. Uh, it's... And then, uh, yeah, just make your way over those small gaps with the, the scattered pile drivers. <laughs> the pile drivers all over the place. <laughs> They're all over the place. Uh, we have time for a donation. Definitely. Uh, just one or a couple? Uh, one should be fine. We got TX's okay. favorite autos. Okay, all right. So. We have $109.38 from ComputerMD82, who's saying, Shout out to Mitch and the awesome team at ESA. Keep up the good work. We surely will. Thank you so much, Computer. Yeah, thank you, Computer. Yeah, there's not really too much to remark on with 5-6, uh, but aside from the fact that this level uniquely showcases the parabeetle enemies that, um, which will be, uh, jumping, will be just jumping on and off of to, to get across. And as we approach the end of the level, you may notice Mitch making a brief pause before he enters the, the pipe to the exit. And this is done intentionally uh, because, because of the way the game loads exits. So if you enter the pipe at the earliest possible moment, it's possible to get crushed by the outer borders of the level while it's still scrolling <laughs> and then take a death. Yeah, yeah, the, the pipe will push you past the boundaries to so squish you, unfortunately. So yeah, the so yeah, um, interesting thing to note about um, 5F2 is that as long as you're moving forward and not wasting any time, you generally don't have to worry about getting hit by those potaboos in the lava. And by the time you reach the fifth platform, you have enough space to build P-Speed uh, just before you reach the dry bones. So depending on whether you stomp it or not, uh, will determine how far your jump will take you. It's also home of the infamous Jesus clip, which yeah. uh, for obvious reasons, we're not gonna go for. Are you guys nuts? So yeah, 5 is a level that would ordinarily be a little intimidating to go through uh, casually because of the spinies and Lakitu that are above you and the Koopas that are on the those last cloud platforms. Um, but yeah, it's easy enough to build P-Speed. Oh no, uh, coin ship! Oh no! Whatever will you do? Yeah, thankfully Mitch already took out the, the three Hammer Bros that are in this world, and he's going to have an opportunity to get two more co uh, coins from the Lakitu once he grabs the card in this level, so we're in good shape. It should make me nice and safe for World 6. I'll be nice and safe. So yeah, 5-9 is uh, a 50-second auto-scroller. It's pretty straightforward in the sense that the majority of it is just simple platforming, although you'll want to stay clear of those, uh, those two fire chomps. The first one is easy enough to snipe out if you have the Fire Flower equipped. Uh, otherwise, you might have to dance around the, the little fireballs that it's going to throw at you. Yeah, uh, honestly, um, casual, inexperienced players, this level is really, really hard. This is a really tough level. I mean, some of these jumps are so weird with the angles of the platforms. And if you decide not to jump at a specific time, it's, it's too late after that. It, like, right? If you're like scared and you're like, no, I'm not going to jump yet. I'll wait till it cycles back. It's, it's too late at that point. <laughs> Yeah, I think that to a degree it's worth uh, memorizing where the, the fire chomps are going to, to spawn so that you can just prepare for them in time. Like the first one's going to spawn after that first horizontal moving lift, and then the other one is where you have that clear blue sky once you're past all the clouds. Yeah, yeah. We got time for a donation as well. Auto scroller, another one. A couple more or just one? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Lay it on. Okay, amazing. We have $100 from Lower Lever CH saying, sitting on the sofa, eating popcorn, and watching Mitch fly through SMB3. What else does one need? Greetings from Switzerland. Thank you very much for your hando. We also have $50 from Anonymous with no comment, but thank you very much nonetheless. $10 from Spirits with no comment as well. Thank you. And a $50 donation from Jardoby with no comment. Thank you all so much for your donations. And Insane. we also have Fenzy sending $200 our way 
saying, well, here we go again. ESA, just like GDQ, a great cause and a good time. Watching the best runner of, F of SMB3, period. Keep it up, chum. And with that, we are at $5,252. We've Let's done go. it. We have the 5k reached, but we're not stopping here. Let's go towards the next thousands. Thank you all so very much for all of your generous donations towards Save the Children. <sighs> You had it, man. I know, I had it. There could have been two. Dang it. At least your, at least your wall jump game is just on point today. <sighs> man, that would have been awesome. But we didn't get it, unfortunately. So yeah, we're gonna be coming up on World Six. I would argue that this is probably one of the most technical in terms of execution for the hundred percent category. There's a couple levels in this that you would ordinarily skip in the warpless that are not the easiest to get through, but has some pretty fun strats coming up. So we see um Mitch do that little turn back before he shoots the fireball so that he doesn't uh, outrun the projectile before it has a chance to take out the patui. So yeah, with some uh, carefully implemented jumps he gets through the gets through the rest of it. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Not a lot of people know, but Mario with P-Speed is faster than his fireballs. He can't just run and shoot. Oh, come on. What a dumb time loss. Yeah, we saw a bit of a miscalculation with um, with the jump on the note block. He was trying to make his way over that over that wall so that he has a good puffer to, to build his P-Speed, but he's able to get it back. Um, an optimal 6 feet would save you about uh, one and a half seconds over the just conventional platforming. Yeah. See if I get a marathon here. Hopefully not. Luckily, I got that extra music box there. Put him to sleep. Uh, so putting putting uh, Hammer Brothers to sleep is technically slower. You got to go into your inventory, select it, and when the Hammer Brothers are asleep, they still do the time length of a movement of one, because the game is trying to be like, hey, move the Hammer Brothers, but oh wait, I can't, because they're asleep. Um, so they're, they're just always movements of one, whereas when all the Hammer Brothers are dead, they're, they're just no movements, there's the ultimate time save. Um, so yeah, Music Box is just like, I'm guaranteeing movements of one for two turns, which is like, that's pretty important for World 6, but again, not, not the most ideal thing you want to do. Yeah, even... A fairly quick equipment of the uh, the music box will cost you about a second, so you're pr effectively just tacking on an extra movement of two. <laughs> yep. We're letting him live, guys. We're letting him live. Put that one up. I get it my way, or the highway, right? <laughs> yeah, that music note is like a pretty decent time loss at, in 6-3. Uh, Unfortunately. Oh, I didn't need to turn back. So yeah, next up we're gonna be going into 6F1, so Mitch is gonna make use of some damage boosting strats just um, as he makes his way over the spike bed. And that'll save you a good 10 seconds over just letting the, the elevator carry you across. Uh, and it's also gonna be advantageous to be small in the second half of the room anyway, as as well as 6-4, so... Gonna see Mitch yeah, grabs that. Perfect. So yeah, Mitch grabs that star and he's gonna get a nice quick kill on Boom Boom with the upside down orb. See you later, Bam Bam. Yeah, fun little trivia about the Boom Booms. They were never programmed to have a kill state like most objects. Uh, it's always meant to be in a normal state. So Boom Boom was programmed to have 37 hit points and killing him with five fireballs sets him to 32. And this value is what triggers his conversion into the orb. So when he comes in contact with the star, I believe it just sets him straight to zero, which is why we get that glitched out orb. It's technically an overkill. Yeah, we did way too much damage to him. All right, so Midge is uh, deliberately going to do 6-6 six, six first. Uh, it's going to be advantageous to go in there as small Mario, so um, he has a smaller hitbox in order to navigate through the narrow passages in the in the water. But it also makes it a little bit scary because it's so easy just to get caught up by the cheap cheeps, especially if you rub one of those walls coming up. So we'll see if he gets a despawn on one of these plants right here. And it looks like he did, very nice. 
I will note though, the despawn from that plant is good, but it's it's really out of the player's control. I mean, we've tested it and it's just like, sometimes it wants to, sometimes it doesn't. It's not on my end, guys, I swear. I've only dropped 91 frames. Yeah, there's a handful of plant despawns in the game that are contingent on how fast you're navigating through the levels as we're gonna see in 6.5, but um, sometimes I swear that it's RNG in 6.6. So yeah, we're going to see uh, a bit of a sprite overload because uh, Mario is moving through the um, through this passageway really fast while he's um, simultaneously taking out those two Buster Beetles. So um, yeah, he's able to despawn at least one of the two nippers up top, and that'll save you about five seconds over just grabbing the shell and just knocking him out that way. Beautiful. It's a very, very important strategy. Once you get to a certain level, it's a big time save. Yeah, if you don't do it, there's just so much lag, right? Like, it's it's awful. Exactly. Teeks knows, Teeks knows. I've been stung by it many a times. So pretty crappy Hammer Brothers, uh, World 6. I got movements 1, which can't complain about, but I got top patterns and all that jazz. See, so yeah, um, coming up on 6-7 now, we're going to be in more Auto Scroller. So this one's going to last about, uh, about a minute and 17 seconds. So um, if we have any more donations, uh, this is a good opportunity as well. I would like to take this opportunity to tell you a bit more about the charity we're raising money for. All of your donations go in full and directly to Save the Children. We have raised over $5,200 them, for them so far. Uh, Save the Children has created more safe spaces in the US and around the world for children in emergencies than any other humanitarian organization. When a disaster strikes, these safe spaces can provide children with protected areas where they participate in organized activities to play, socialize, learn, and express themselves as they rebuild their lives. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful donations, and let's keep supporting this amazing cause. Yep, I agree. Let's go, guys. Big cause. Boom. Alright, so that was uh, another auto-scroller. Uh, we're done with the auto-scrollers for this world, which is pretty good. Don't have any more. Don't want any more. So yeah, as we make our way through the, the second fort in World 6, uh, this would ordinarily be a pretty time-consuming just because you have several of those thwomps in the, uh, the upper section that can get in your way and pretty much force you to wait around. Uh, no one wants to deal with that, so we're just going to circumvent it by just taking the tail and just flying through the underpass. Do, 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 do. Another bam bam down. All right, so in 6A, we're going to be coming up on our second H jump in the game. Uh, this one's going to be a capital H. And so where ice blocks actually belong. Get a nice, uh, nice big jump, get a nice boost off of that Buster Beetle, and we're out of here. So because we're collecting pretty much all the P-Wings in 100%, we're, we're going to have one left over to pretty much fly over the wall in 6-9, so we don't have to go through it the, the conventional way. So it's pretty much going to be a 14 second level. I love it. See ya! Whew, alright. Here we go, this is a stressful level coming up. Always stressful. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep my mouth shut so you can focus. <laughs> And he gets it, very nice. So, yeah, we, so he used that tail just to run off those uh, those little ice blocks in the beginning so he has enough flight to grab that quick fire flower and then maintain his P-Speed uh, through careful platforming at the end. Definitely um, definitely something you want to nail because um, it'll save you about six or seven seconds. Oh, I like half went for the clip, but like half didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. fun thing to note about 6F3 is that um, it has a little floor clip that you could do in the top left corner where that doorway is, and it would allow you to pretty much bypass that elevator where the, the boos are, and that would save you about seven seconds. Uh, it's incredibly rare for it to be successfully implemented into a run.
All right. So I'm not going to go for the normal fire kill on this boss because taking damage is is a really annoying thing uh, when fighting this boss. And then the balls are all over the place and it's like, it's just not, I don't know. You gotta wing it, you know? If you feel comfortable, you go for it. If you don't, you don't. Kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a um, pretty optimal risk of, um, you know, weighing of risks. Yeah, you especially want to keep your Fire Flower for the, the first portion of World 7. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not going for Fast 7 too, but still. See, we have a bit of a swag clip that we can, uh, we're coming up on right now. We'll see if he gets it, and he does. So yeah, it doesn't really save you any time, but it's uh, not only swaggy, but it allows you to uh, bypass having to deal with those jet flames on the bottom portion. So we can just... Whoa, whoa, whoa. It saves my soul time, okay? Yeah. My soul is happy. Yeah, it spares you 10 seconds so you can uh, pretty much kick back, relax, and have some cucumbers over the eyes. Yeah, <laughs> cucumbers over the eyes. That's right. Teek's nose. Teek's nose. Alright, so one stomp, two stomp, three, he's out of here. So we see um, Mitch is um, doing those little meticulous movements from right to left. And what he's trying to do is set up his subpixels so he has um, he has a pretty early clip coming up in 7-1. So he's trying to go for the standing clip, if I'm not mistaken. So he's trying to... So subpixels are pretty much... Um, you know, like, they're... They're subunits of pixels, and there's like they're like one sixteenth the size, so you can't really see them. But you'll know you're on a high value if you uh, move one one pixel to the left. And you need yeah. subpixel values either fourteen or fifteen in order to get it first try. So hopefully this works. Go through all that time to like mess it up, right? So hopefully not. And he gets it. Very nice. Right, so like you go through all that time, like I knew I was on the right sub picks. That's a, that setup that I did for the one guarantees that you can stand clip every time uh, for the clip, but um, it's still physically difficult to to achieve. So you gotta watch out for that. Yeah, sometimes you can do those little micro taps to the left, and Mario just isn't moving, so you're just not on the value that you want because you don't know what you're starting with as you're doing the movements. All right, so we saw the, the little turn back in order to build P-Speed, so he's able to bypass uh, having to build a bridge with those note blocks. So, very nice. Oh, pipe to pipe! Let's go! Normally I do a much faster 7-2, but that is not a marathon safe 7-2. Yeah, the alternative um, that Mitch is talking about is the fast 7-2, so you don't even have to do turn backs in order to build that P-Speed. You can just kind of build it as you go along, but it's very easy to get frame ruled and just not fill up your meter in time. And you have to be very meticulous with um, how you're landing on those pipes. So yeah, seven three. Um, you have a pretty easy opportunity to build P speed right away as you're while you're running down that first hill, and then just uh, get those convenient boosts off the the Koopas and the Lakitus, and we're pretty much out of here. So we'll see if uh, Mitch gets this uh, next clip right here coming up. Uh, yeah, I think, um, so yeah, what Mitch was trying to do was he was trying to clip that pipe right there so we could avoid those two pipe transitions, and that would ultimately save him about seven seconds. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's also one of the most lenient in terms of what subpixel values do and do not work. So out of 16 subpixels, only two don't. Um, but even at the same time, it's uh, it's very picky with the angle in which you're you're bunking your head on that pipe in order to get through. So it looks yeah, like if you jump too early, your head will get stuck in the pipe, and if you jump too late, you simply won't get it. It, it still has that very precise pixel jump. I don't, I don't, I can't tell what I what my deal was there. Like if my head was in the pipe, then I had a bad sub pixel, but I think I jumped a little too late or early there. Yeah, I think it was late because you bunked and then hit the wall. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you can visually see like my ears like inside the pipe a little bit, um, that's a good indication that like I did jump in the right spot and I got a bad sub pixel, but if I wasn't... Yeah, generally the, the sweet spot to get the clip is to have um, the center of Mario's head, like the space between his ears, bunk the, the thick green line in the, in the pipe. That's right. 
Right on, sea creatures, everyone's favorite level. Yeah, Everyone seven here four. likes sea creatures? Clearly the best level in the game. So yeah, this is gonna be one of the lengthier auto scores to contend with, and the fish that spawn are RNG. So it is possible He's to get cornered in at me. some points. What a yeah. Go of away, course. man. <laughs> <laughs> Only marathons. I think he did that the last time. But he's, he's gone now. We're, we're done with him. Yeah, it's especially unnerving when the, the enemies chase you because ideally you want to maintain your raccoon tail for the remainder of the level so you can use it for the piranha and the 7 of one that come up later on. Yeah. But if, but if for I'm any reason you take... <laughs> But yeah, if for any reason you take damage, your backup at that point would have to be to grab the Fire Flower, snipe out those fish in the bloopers so you can minimize how much lag they create, and then you can get to the latter half of the level. Um, yeah, the mini bloopers can also slow down the level a lot, uh, potentially costing a couple seconds. Move, like, even fish! <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> like He's blocking the pipe for so long. Get out of my way, fish! It's so annoying when that happens. Yeah. Yeah, even on a good day, you can lose about two and a half seconds in this level just to lag alone. So we're definitely going to go for 7-7, seven, seven, guys. I will try it. Probably once, maybe twice. Depending on how I feel. Gotta go for it, right? Of course. I've died there before. Watch out. I fluttered too low, right? I tried to minimize as much floating time. But I didn't make it. Like, I just missed the ledge and I fell into the pit. It was horrible. Oh, don't worry. I've done that on PB pace as well. So yeah, because you already have that tail equipped, you don't really need to grab any extra P-Wings for this fortress. You could just um, have another an extra one left over for both 7, 6, and 7, 9. <laughs> so I will use a P-Wing here. So yeah, 7-6 is a level much like 7-1. Players have the option of clipping through the doorway to bypass the level entirely. Um, however, if you already have the P-Wing, because, you know, this is 100%, you can just pretty much fly over the wall and save yourself that trouble. Alright, now we have the stressful part of the run. Although, everything's been stressful. But this is where it gets pretty intense. So yeah, there's pr pretty much two common ways of getting through 7-8, and in most 100% runs, you'll see stars utilized for the whole level to navigate past the Batuis, the Munchers, the Piranhas along the way. And if done optimally, uh, Mario can just skate by before the Fire Nipper has a chance to shoot at the end. And since they operate on a global timer, as long as you're getting through the level optimally, um, you're pretty much safe. Yeah. So yeah, right now we're going to see um, Mitch go for the 7-7 seven, seven clip right now. So he's going to try to clip that top left corner of that pipe in order to bypass the level. So it's going to take like two oh. All right, three attempts. Oh, I tried. I tried. I tried. The first two were not good enough. They, they, those were weird. But yeah, if, um, if Mitch was able to get that clip on the first try and then just grab the card right away, it would save him 17 seconds over just doing the level normally. But uh, yeah, because we're in a marathon, we don't want to dwell on it too much. But we're at that point now where it's absolutely necessary to do if you want to get world record. Yeah, so, and because I spent three three tries, yeah, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's a good time. So yeah, in an ideal world, um, the most optimal way to get through 7-9 is to bypass the maze altogether by clipping the four walls and count it on the ground. Um, and if all four clips are done successfully on the first try, it allows the player to save 14 seconds over just doing a normal maze path. Um, however, due to how rarely the subpixel will allow you for that kind of success, you'll just see players go for two clips and then bail by going through the rest of the maze. But in 100%, we're just gonna we're just gonna take the P wing and then just try to go for the mid clip. Very nice. So now that Mitch has a Fire Flower that he grabbed right at the end, he's pretty much uh, equipped to go into 7F2. We're gonna snipe out some piranhas.
So yeah, we saw that that nice leap of faith that we did um that Mitch just did in the pipe. We see a nice little reference to to the lost levels again, 2J. Hang on. Uh we used one of our last stars here. Did I touch? I did. It's okay though, we made it. Alright, we have lots of auto scrollers. <laughs> yeah, we have two minutes and ten seconds just in this airship alone, and then another minute forty for the first tank, and I think about another minute and a half for the Navy, so we're pretty much good to go into the ocean for quite a while. So I assume that means donations, right? Indeed. Yeah. Alright, awesome. We have uh, $25 from Untamely Doom without any comment. Thank you very much. Um, and that is going to uh, an Octopath Traveler incentive we have where you can choose... Um, uh, just making sure I'm right on this. Um, yes, yeah, so you can choose which story the runners will race in. That's going to be later. Um, but just to remind you, you can always choose a donation bid war or a donation incentive when donating to ESA. So make sure to include that in your donation on the donation page. We also have $10 from Wales Couch saying hi to everybody. Thanks for this awesome event. Greetings from Ostia. P.S. Go for Jesus clip. And last but not least, we also have six dollars from Petset with no comment. Thank you all very much for all your wonderful donations uh, to Save the Children, which is a great cause that we should all be supporting. And we are, we are getting many, many donations this wonderful run. Thank you so much for all of them. Yeah, right on, thank you guys. Incredible! How do you feel about that World 7, Teeks? I think it was okay. Didn't really get yeah. good clip luck, um, but overall, I think it went pretty nice. Yeah, I agree. Got could always um, take a little victory lap when you get first try seven one, because that's a pretty common run killer, especially once you get to a certain point in Hundo. Yeah, totally worth the time, right? Absolutely. So, what do you say? We're we gonna go for a fire kill on Ludwig. Oh yeah. Yep. Should be able to unless he's. A little scary, but we're out of here. I tried to do... I almost got, like, I got the wall clip. I got all wall clips this run for the off-screen wall grab, but I didn't press A at the right time. Wah, wah. So yeah, one of the nice benefits about 100% is, you know, you pretty much only have one pattern to deal with for, for most of the Koopalings, and, um, you know, as you're making your way through, since you... Pretty much always going to have your Fire Flower towards the, um, you know, once you come out of 7F2 in the Piranha. Yeah. So you know exactly what to expect. Uh, shout out to Teeks's favorite non-auto scroller level. <laughs> Try to stew clip there. Come on, I'm trying to do <laughs> all the things here. I do all the things. This is your favorite level, right, Teeks? Non-auto scroller? Oh, yeah. I Yeah, I came up with a fun little peace speech strat for, you know, when Tank 1 is uh, non-auto scrolled. Which you only find in like randomizers, right? Which Mario 3 has a pretty big randomized community. So if you guys, if there's anyone out there who enjoys Mario 3 and is looking at this and is like, uh, you know, I don't really want to speed around, but I like playing Mario 3. Randomizer is really fun to do casually a lot. And there's like randomized tournaments and it's like, it's kind of fair for a lot of people, right? I mean, just because just because you're good doesn't mean the randomness is going to be in your favor kind of thing. And sometimes it's harder for speedrunners because we're so glued with our strats, right? Exactly. Yeah, when you're when you come from a vanilla running background, it's very it's very easy to get tempted into doing some vanilla strats in certain levels. But uh, it's very easy for that to backfire, depending on what uh, what enemy sets you get along the way. And even when you perform very very well, it's still very possible to lose a race just because of some routing decisions. Especially when you add additional conditions like hammers breaking lots and stuff like that. Lots of weird stuff. But in terms of the hundred percent run. All we really have right now is me making sure I'm not taking damage, um, avoiding all this stuff. Much better for the runner to do these than the viewers. 
Um, but there are D-lag strategies that I can do. Uh, there's a component of luck at the end here. If the boomerang bro moves forward or backwards, or maybe I can kill him before he throws the boomerang. That, that would mean you get really unlucky, but lucky. Let's see. Uh, he moved backwards, so that's still good. Boomerang was not on screen for very long. Get that star. Very nice. All right. Yeah, it's probably the second best outcome you could have possibly asked for aside from just getting Wrangless altogether. Yeah, exactly. It would be Wrangless and then that pattern right there. Although he did delay uh, throwing his Boomerang a little bit. You want the instant throw move backwards, but I'm not going to be, you know, worried too much about that. <laughs> exactly. So the hands, Teeks, are they important in 100%? Um, not to the same degree as they would be in Warpless, but um, you do lose a little bit of time just to do to each hand animation being about a second and a half. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of people don't realize that you can enter hand stages like normal levels. If, if you cross a hand stage and you don't get pulled in, you can press A to enter it, right? That's right. Yeah, so um, if you get pulled in by all three hands with the hand animation that comes up, you lose about 4.5 seconds. Whereas in Warpless, you'd lose a minute. <laughs> That's good times. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, we might see you go for the uh, the star strat in uh, hand one since you know, you're going to be going through it anyway. Yep, I will be doing the star strat, hopefully. Hopefully it works out. It's, a, it's kind of an annoying one. It's pretty rough, but not a big deal. Yeah, it's a really tight timing window because it's very easy just to rub against one of the blocks as you're trying to bypass the, the hammer bros that come up in those two rows. Yeah, it's that, it's that P-Speed turn back that's really rough. But we'll see how it goes. Down the pipe! So I quit my star. Uh. It's okay. So that's, that's what's tricky about it, is like that turn back on that one tile and then keeping it. That's very tricky. But I didn't get pulled in by the hand, so that's nice. Uh, I got pulled in by that one, though. Oh, it looks like you tried to go for the hand 2 piece speed just now, and if he was able to get it, um, that, would about, that would save him about a second. Yeah, but yeah, we still- time save. Yeah, we saw him try to manipulate the, the meter just now by doing that micro turn back. Very hard to do. All right. Hand stages are pretty much done here. I got pulled in by two, so I lost probably about three seconds from the hand stages. And then I didn't get hand one or hand two PCB, but that's okay. Those are very hit or miss strategies. Yeah, coming up next, we have the Air Force. So this is going to be the fastest auto scroller in the game, and it's also one of the shorter ones too. It's going to be no more than a minute. So. Yeah. Um, I also mentioned this during GDQ. What makes this airship difficult is not really the speed, but the combination of what the speed does to Mario's momentum. You move differently. Your physics feel different, and that's why it's so hard. You play the game normally, like how you normally play, and then you enter this level, and the way Mario turns left and right is changed a little bit due to the speed, so that's what throws a lot of people off in this level. Weird that it does that. It becomes slightly harder when you're under the adrenaline rush of a really good pace and you got past the hands. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, practice can prepare you for a lot of things, but the adrenaline is not one of them. Yeah, you cannot practice getting no hands on a PB pace, unfortunately. If you could, I feel like a lot of people would secure more PB World 8s, right? Definitely. Exactly. All right, so All we're right. down to our last few uh, execution-based levels in the game. So 8-1, uh, whether you have the Firefly or the Hammer Suit, whatever, uh, Mario will have an opportunity to clear a path with those piranhas uh, to start running. And then once the P-Speed is built, uh, you're just going to slide under that wall, and he'll be in a good position to stomp off the Koopas and the Bullet Bill launchers, and that'll set himself up to reach the end of the level. That music note tried to troll me there. <laughs> tried to do like a wall rub on the music note. Please don't, Mario. Please don't. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Sun. Mr. Mr. Sun, what do you got for me? What do you got me for me today, huh? So yeah, we're gonna see the, um, the Angry Sun one last time, so I'm um, just gonna snipe out these three piranhas going uphill, 
And yeah, it's again worth noting that the the sun's movement is RNG based. So depending on how you make that leap of faith as you're making your way past those uh, those last few note blocks, it's very possible for him to catch you off guard. Thankfully, that didn't happen here though. Alright, so we got the conveyor belt P speed, so that's gonna save Mitch uh, an additional second. And we get the one cycle, very nice. Whee! One cycle, let's go! Alright, we have one more auto scroller, time for one more, maybe two donations if we got him. I would just like to say that. Uh, if you think a $5 donation is not a lot, then I will prove you wrong because $5 can provide education supplies for one child, giving him or her the tools they need to continue their education. So thank you all for all of your donations towards Save the Children, even the smallest ones, as every dollar counts. Let's go towards uh, the consecutive thousands of dollars. Thank you very much. Let's go! Yeah, that's awesome, man. Five bucks, that's easy. So I'm just spamming fireballs here. It's not really much for me to do because I just hold forward. I'm on the last auto scroller of the game. It's going fairly decent. Really not a whole lot that I uh, that I can do. Luckily, this auto scroller is way more tame than the first one. Right? It's two tanks in World Eight. This is the second one. The first one is way harder than this one. This one. This one has like a little hard part right here, I guess, for casual. But filthy casual. Yeah, the cannons aren't as awkward and don't have those bub bombs to worry about just generating a whole bunch of lag, so you could just pretty much uh, move forward, stay in the front, and just keep shooting and jumping as necessary. And the auto scrollers doesn't last very long, no more than about a minute ten. Yeah. Alright, here All right. we go, Bowser's Castle, last one. We got this. So yeah, there's a few interesting things to note about Bowser's Castle, the first of which is that you can clip under, through the wall underneath the elevator, and that could save you about a second and a half if you decide to go for it. Gonna play it a little safe here, just go straight for the elevator, no problem. Uh, it's also pretty common to avoid if you're already on PV pace and don't need it. And then once you reach the top, you could do the one-up clip to avoid going down the stairs and dodging the Poda boost uh, while climbing the donut lifts. And then we're just gonna get peace speed in the statue room. The fireballs are going to be in the, the same spot each time, so Mitch knows exactly how to jump. And we're just 35 fireballs away. Hi, Bowser, and bye, Bowser. And thankfully, we got a good RNG pattern, so didn't have to worry about taking damage and losing another 40 seconds waiting for him to break the floor. And we're out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, get your GGs out for Mitch Flower Power on a really awesome dunk. Time on going through the doors. I'll try and say it as well. So... Time. Right on! That was a fantastic run! That was, that was pretty good, I got an off-screen wand grab, can't complain. Oof. A one a 11037, wow. Okay, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I just want to thank uh, ESA. Uh, so much. This, is, this has been awesome. I really like running Mario 3, and I think, I think you know, most people out there like Mario 3, so I'm glad I was able to do this. I am uh, Mitch Flower Power. You guys can go ahead and give me a follow on Twitch if you guys enjoy Mario 3 and, I mean, what, Treacherous Thursdays where we play crappy games, but um, yeah, so that would be awesome. I stream every day, and also, I want to thank Teeks for doing my commentary. He was nice enough to go ahead and just give me a big old yes when I asked him. That's... Couldn't ask for anything better, and Teeks is a very, very valued member of the Mario 3 community. He also streams. Teeks, go ahead if you want any shoutouts. Yeah, thank you so much, Mitch. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you again to TS, to ESA for um, for having us and for all the wonderful work that they do for charity. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a it's been an enormous pleasure being a part of this. And uh, yeah, thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of the marathon. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy the rest of the marathon. Woo! Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, we'll see you in just a second after a short, uh, after a short break, and we'll see you with Bowser's Fury by Recult. So um, don't 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 go anywhere. We'll be right back.